Okay. Amitai taught me this technique for uh, starting. Everybody shut up. Okay. <laughs> So, hi, uh, we're here to talk to you about Contenta CMS, which is the community-driven uh, API distribution for Drupal. Um, I'm here with these lovely people who will introduce themselves shortly. My name's Sally Young. I'm a senior technical architect at Lullabot, and... Uh, I'm Dan Wiener. I'm like a former scientist. No, I'm not, but like I would like to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I'm freelancing. Hi, I'm Cristina Chumillas. I just joined DOT and designed some stuff and tried to do some Drupal. And that's all. All right. Uh, yeah, welcome. Um, so um, there was a lot of like discussion at um, DrupalCon Baltimore around the idea of having an API-first distribution. So. Um, like a lot of people like started to experiment like with the idea of using decoupled Drupal and um, there's a lot of stuff you need to know about that um, in order to, to actually do that. And we realized there's a, like, a lot of potential to help people uh, with, with doing that. So we kind of thought about, so what kind of groups of people are out there we could help? And we came up with, these, the, with like three personas. We call them Fritz, Angela, and Nina. Um, the founder developer Fritz, the technical lead Angela, and the Drupal developer Nina, and we try to like think about like what could help them specifically, and then we like build this idea um, of contender around this idea. So let's start with the, the founder developer. So um, we um, thought about the founder developer. Um, that's someone who probably like knows JavaScript, CSS, HTML, like. Perfect. They use npm every day. They I, they babble everything and are totally into Webpack. Or they don't know their thing in their like in their domain um, really well. But um, while they like master the front end, they don't necessarily know like how to store their data. Um, I mean, many people in that area like use MongoDB as like the solution of everything. Um, but that's it's just a d database, right? Um, they maybe use Firebase, which is like a, basically backend as a service from Google. Um, but we thought maybe like f providing them an idea that Drupal is out there, um, which is an open source solution to their, maybe to their problem, hopefully. Um, maybe we could actually like tell them, hey, cool, here's something you could use. Um, but there are like problems with it. Like we can't just put them Drupal in front of them. Like maybe they have never used PHP before. Um, maybe they don't know how to configure like a web server or something um, because it's just like so easy with like Nodemon or anything. It's just npm start and be done with it. Um, so we thought about how to make it as easy as possible for them to like try out Contenta. So we came up with the idea of a one command installation. So if you go to contentacms.org, there's like three lines of stuff you need to type into your shell, and then it downloads Contenta, it installs Contenta using SQLite, which is a database on, on disk without any further installation requirements. And it starts a web server using the PHP built-in web server. And then it actually even opens up the site inside your browser. So uh, that's our idea of making it as easy as possible. That's not meant at all for any kind of production usage. But it's just a nice way for people to get started. Um, and once you have completed the setup, you will be presented with like our welcome screen. We did more than just. Uh, the typical user, uh, typical welcome screen in Drupal, which says, yay, we don't have content, um, which is like not really welcoming. So we try to welcome them. And um, yeah, what you can do with Contenta when you first uh, see it is a couple of things. You can manage content, um, like every proper content management system, that should be a good thing to do. Uh, 
then uh, you can manage your media, so upload images and reuse those images. Um, yeah, you can uh, define your content models, which is basically adding fields and content types, um, which is a really important step in a decoupled world, at least for me, because you can, you need to like design your content models in a way that it's actually useful for like potentially more than one consumer. Um, then uh, API is like an API documentation. How can you actually like do HTTP requests to get, get your data back? So that's um, all accessible from here. Uh, there's access control, which is like creating users, user roles and like, like OAuth um, clients and this kind of configuration and reports like usual like logs and stuff. And then unlike, so, so far this looks exactly right, like Reservoir. So all the things, um, we basically copied their code because it's open source, yay. Um, <laughs> and uh, that, but we have one, we had one idea, we actually want to enable like to go beyond that and that's why we have the advanced hub which basically just opens up the normal menu structure of Drupal and uh, just provides everything you have there. Um, yeah, let's talk about a little bit more of the like, technical like base of this. We use JSON API uh, which is a module mostly written by Matteo who said he can't be here. Um, JSON API is a standard for writing REST resources or REST endpoints. So it is JSON, but it's a, like, it's a, it's a form of JSON which has opinions. So it, there is a standard um, which says like, okay, here's your actual data and here are maybe errors of like validation and here's your pager information and so on and so forth. Um, it's a standard which is partly used by people. Um, it's really, really common in like the Ruby and the Ember community right now. Um, yeah, but it's really nice to have a module which just outputs and provides you every, any kind of data uh, Drupal provides. Um, we have authentication using simple OAuth. Um, we have media, I'll talk about that later. Uh, we have API documentation based upon, um, it's called Redux, this UI and um, like powered by all kind of contrib modules, mostly written or like partly written by, for example, someone from the rest of our team, which is also cool. We share stuff together or we shared in the past. Um, and then we have JSON API extras, which allows you to customize your, customize the JSON uh, in a way that it doesn't look like Drupal. So instead of having field underscore uh, title, you have just title or something like that. And we, uh, yeah, we have image style support and we think about adding GraphQL support. Um, let's talk about documentation. We try to be a documentation hub for people. So as a front-end developer, I maybe I know my front-end stuff, but I don't know how to like maybe configure Drupal or like all kind of things, right? So we provide like this documentation hub. It's basically a collection of external resources of documentation. Um, so we have like here two examples with like nice videos from Matteo because he's awesome. Um, yeah, that's the idea. Have a collection of resources as a starter for people. Um, we also try to encourage people already to be part of the community by having us suggest a tutorial link up in the top. So um, yeah, not sure whether anyone used that. Uh, all right. Um, one thing we added is media. Um, because when we looked at all the proprietary CMSs out there, or like, uh, like Contentful, for example, which is a CMS as a service, um, they have like content models, and you can define content models nicely, and then they have media, and it's like a sibling, because everyone expects that you can like use media, or assets, or images, or how you call them. Um, we have a really simple implementation using the media module in Contrib, or media entity, and so on and so forth. Um, but there are many features we could add. In case you have feedback, what do you actually need on a database base? Maybe you need, need like a copyright statement somewhere in these images or an expire date for media. I've heard that people try to have that. Um, yeah. 
Um, another thing we have added recently is image style support. Um, so when you have a complex site, but let's say like 15 different image styles, and you have 100 images, you have an overall combination of 1,500 possible images. Um, but the way how you configure your site, you actually don't have that many images in theory available for the user. So if you would be able to like query any image for, um, for any image style, you could really fill up your disk space really easily. Um, so you need some kind of protection. That's why Drupal by default spits out this itoke in this URL, itoke equals tk something. It's a way to protect um, like this kind of attacks. So, but in a decoupled world, that's tricky um, because uh, in a decoupled, so if you would just have the URL to the image, that wouldn't work because you still need to somehow get these, this secret information out of Drupal. And the way how we do it is um, we allow consumers, so like API clients, to say these are the image styles I want to use. So in this case, we have two of them, recipe list 350 and 7050, and um, they, you can configure for your API client, these are the ones we, I, uh, like I need, and then you get these URLs and you can use them directly, uh, which is a nice and simple solution. Um, on a production environment, you maybe actually want to use like your CDN, which does the image resizing for you instead of your server. Yeah, the final thing I want to talk about is workflow. Um, we don't have support for any kind of workflow right now. Um, that's mainly because JSON API doesn't support revisions right now, and that's mainly because um, the entity query system doesn't support revisions in the full way. It supports revisions for a single entity, but it doesn't support revisions once you have any kind of uh, like relationship in place. Um, yeah, maybe we should just accept it that this doesn't work, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you need revision support in order to have any kind of like preview, right? Because otherwise you can't access it. But um, there are like really nice way how people on production actually still do something nice with preview and I think that we'll talk about that. Sure. So, um, workflow and preview in Drupal 8 with uh, decoupled architecture is something I've solved a few times um, for client projects I've worked on. Um, I know we have a team working with JSON API right now, and one of the solutions they have done is to push out revisions to separate preview databases. Um, it, it's really tricky because you don't want to put all of your revisions in your public API necessarily, especially if you're uh, a new site and you might have embargoes on your data but you still want to preview them. You don't really want people to start trawling through your API to see what the secret news is going to be in 15 minutes time or whatever. Uh, so that's one way. Um, one nice thing about Contenter is that we have set up authenticated users for you, so you always have the option of only allowing uh, unpublished or you know, new revisions to be available to authenticated users. Obviously, you have to then implement that in your front-end consumer, so if you're not already implementing authentication, that might be a bit of a pain. Um, one other uh, thing about it, though, is in a decoupled environment, preview actually generally gets a lot easier. Uh, so usually we can preview one item because we can send that revision off to our front end consumer. You could even just send that like in a, a, a small packet that's not even part of an API and open up your front end consumer that way. That's really great for uh, reviewing one piece of content. But if you're pushing revisions uh, into a database, you can uh, pass lots of things off to your front end consumer. So if every piece of content has a, a unique identifier, a UUID, and it also has a revision, which is another unique ID. You can push off those revision numbers into your uh, front-end consumers as, as a list, and then your front-end consumer can go through that list, and every time it sees a UUID that matches one of those revisions, it can just slot in um, your preview content every time it sees that. And that's really great, because then you can uh, solve that problem of I want to see what my site will look like when I add these five new pieces of content. So you can kind of have that staging area 
um, functionality, which has been kind of difficult to do with Drupal because uh, our front end is also our back end and site and everything mixed in together. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we have lots of ideas on how to do this. Um, I think there might be some patches in the JSON API queue now that's kind of working on some of the revision stuff. Uh, but yeah, come and talk to us, um, work with this. Uh, with us on sprint day would be fantastic. So uh, now we're going to look at the technical lead or Angular. And uh, this is a person that um, is going to be evaluating Drupal against other solutions that are out there. There's someone that hasn't necessarily uh, used Drupal before. They're going to be looking at other things like Prismic or Contentful or you know custom Django frameworks, all that kind of stuff. Um, they also are going to need to decide whether they should do a decoupled site or, or not. They might not have had experience doing decoupled sites before. And so they're not necessarily going to know what's possible or what's going to be hard. So if you've ever tried to do a decoupled site with an API, it's really great. You like, open your JavaScript framework. You get some data in, and you're like, oh, that's really cool. This is super easy. And then you start to get into the weeds of things later on where you're like, oh, no, now I have to do routing and all this other kind of stuff. And you might not realize uh, what demons lie ahead. So one of the things we try to provide with Contenta is, um, as well as the documentation, uh, it's quite an opinionated distribution. So we want to provide implementations of tried and tested patterns that, that we've used ourselves on projects and we know um, will mostly work. Uh, <laughs> there's, of course, many solutions to lots of things, but we want to provide one package that you can roll out your sites really easily with. Uh, and we have lots of amazing discussions about this in the Contenta Slack channel. Um, we had this epic one on routing a while ago, and it was amazing. And all these people just came in and were you know, telling us, oh, well, on my project, I have these requirements. And after all of that, we could kind of come to a solution that we really liked, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really important to us that people come and get involved and, and tell us what their actual use cases are before we start implementing uh, these kind of things. So um, these example implementations we're actually doing in a recipe demo site, which is part of the out of the box initiative, which Christina will talk about. And the other half of it is we also provide lots of front end consumers. So. Uh, I work on the React consumer. We have, uh, actually I have a table, so I'll show you what we have in a bit. But the idea with that is that not only can you get going really quickly with your back end with Contenta, uh, you can also get going really quickly with your front end as well, because then you won't have to implement uh, stuff like routing. You can just really quickly uh, get going and every, like your URLs will work, which would be really nice. Um, and if you're, you know, maybe moving over to using JavaScript or other, you know, you've never used, uh, Alexa before and you have to write a skill, then it's a huge win to be able to just download a repo and mostly have it working so you can start hacking from there. Um, from the point of view of publishers, uh, we're seeing that, um, so publishers used to redo their sites like every five plus years or so, so they had quite a lot of longevity on their CMSs. Uh, but what, uh, the company I work at, we're seeing people doing their sites about every two years now. So there's a lot more churn. And the most expensive part of that uh, churn is that they need to migrate their data over. And that is what takes by far the most amount of time. Um, so it is expensive. And if the site has been built with lots of layout things baked into the content model, then it makes it really difficult to migrate as well because you're going to have to pull all of that out. And then if you're going into another site where it has lots of layout like embedded into the content, then you're going to have to figure out how to make it match to your new layout. So going decoupled is really nice in that way because it forces this migration to think about how, uh, what content actually semantically means as opposed to how you want it to appear. Um, on this one front-end consumer because it, it puts people more into a mindset of we want this to appear on many consumers. So instead of having your drop-down that's uh, green, orange, or red, like actually what they really meant was uh, warning, error, or great. Um, yeah, so that's pretty nice. Uh, and also, uh, we want to help people with multi-channel publishing. So uh, has anyone used the AMP module here for Drupal? 
Yeah, a few people. Cool. So, um, if you don't know what AMP is, Google got really annoyed at sites being really, really slow. So they came out with a specification that massively stripped down sites and didn't let them put tons of advertising, JavaScript, and whatnot on. Uh, and Facebook have a similar thing called Instant Articles, and I'm sure there's others out there as well. Uh, Instant Articles actually hasn't been very popular, but AMP uh, has been super popular um, with lots of our clients. Um, we want to help people uh, get these things out quickly without having to like, really hack into their sites um, so they can provide something clean and quick when they, these new standards keep coming out. Uh, so yeah, we have like a <laughs> hit list of hard problems um, that we've been working on. Uh, this is not extensive. Uh, one of the things, as I mentioned, is path aliases. So uh, Drupal has a routing system. That's really great. Uh, our front-end consumer has a routing system, and maybe your app has deep linking. They're not always going to match up. So uh, it's really tempting to use the path uh, module in Drupal because you know it does like nice URLs for us. We can configure it. That's really great. Uh, but my favorite example of where this goes wrong in Decoupled is you need to make a path called slash admin or slash node on your front end consumer. So you go into Drupal and you alias admin, and that's great, and that appears on your front end with a node. And then you try to go to your admin page, and uh, it just shows up with a node, and you realize you can't access your admin page anymore, and, and that's great. So, <laughs> so one of the things we've contributed uh, is the snail module. Uh, you can find that on our GitHub. Um, it separates away Drupal's routing system from all that path alias stuff, so um, you can keep those clean, which is nice. Uh, we also have been thinking about WYSIWYG editors a lot. So in uh, multi-consumer environments, we can't provide as much stuff in the WYSIWYG uh, as, as editors would like, unfortunately. Um, so if we want to provide like a really cut-down experience that's going to be portable. We're also thinking about whether uh, your consumer is going to understand all the things that are available in that particular text format. So for example, uh, if you're deploying to a, a Samsung TV, it might not understand what an HTML image tag is. And if I'm deploying to my front end, then I might not even want to use an HTML image tag. I probably want to use a picture element with responsive images. So um, we have to be very careful with the way that we add semantic information around body text with WYSIWYGs in Decoupled. Um, I kind of touched on the multiple, multiple consumers already, so that's fine. Um, image styles, Daniel mentioned, and another problem with that is that uh, you don't necessarily know when you're building your front-end consumer what image styles you're going to need. So you might start building your site, and you're like, okay, I want one that's 300 pixels wide, and so you go to the CMS team, and you ask for that, and then you realize you didn't actually want that at all, and now you need five others, and you just have to keep going back and forth with the CMS team um, and bugging them all the time to add all these image styles for you. So that's something we want to make a little bit easier for you to configure, but still not allowing uh, Drupal to just create any image style ever so someone can come and take down your site and fill up your disk. We also provide authentication out of the box as well. So uh, OAuth can be really tricky to set up. So we've set that up for you so you can already start getting authenticated data out of JSON API. And something we've been thinking about recently is release cycles. So one challenging thing with an API is that you want to maintain version compatibility. Uh, we can't version things with the JSON API right now. So if I decide to take a field away, then it might break all of my consumers. Uh, we were thinking about adding some kind of versioning string. We're not quite sure about this one yet, so if you want to come and help us in the sprint with this, uh, please do. It's, it's very tricky because one of the most powerful things about Drupal is you can just get in there and, and change all the fields and content types, and that's great, but we need to roll those changes out to our consumers in a non-breaking way. Uh, and one option there might be to just say, like, once you've created a field, that's it. Like, you can never delete it. You can migrate over to other fields if you want and, and deprecate them. But yeah, it's one idea. Uh, yeah. So um, as I mentioned, uh, one of the things we are doing is uh, providing lots of demo applications which follow the out-of-the-box initiatives. So I'll hand over to Christina, who can talk to you more about that. So. 
Hi, uh, the good part here is that there's a demo if you want to try out Contenta. This demo is thought especially for testing real life things. I mean, how you will work on that. And uh, it's based on the out of the box uh, initiative uh, content model that we actually work together uh, to come up with uh, this content model. Uh, we started before with some, with, uh, with Lowry and some other people just uh, trying to figure out which were going to be the content types and fields and so on. And later on we uh, uh, talked with them and it, for me it was really a thing that opened my mind uh, regard, regarding that because uh, together we figured out that we had to find a way to uh, put uh, the content in separate fields. So, for example, from Alexa, you can uh, read it because, for example, what you see is what you get from Alexa is not the best thing to do. So, uh, uh, we found a rich content model that you can see. Uh, for example, for the recipe, you have the ingre ingre ingredients, you have the, the steps, you have to follow a description, so you have these things separated. And there are teasers, there are teasers for different content types. And it gives, uh, um, uh, the content model was defined before the design so for the out of the box initiative was created. So there were uh, a great bunch of wireframes created by Keith. And uh, all the consumers, people that was working on the consumers had these wireframes to work around this and to figure out how to make all the, all the pages and recipes work with the consumers. And they could compare from different approaches from different consumers how to work with everything. So as you can see, there are a bunch of consumers, most of them based on JavaScript, libraries and so on. You have React, you have Elm and so on, but you also have a chatbot that it's actually working with Twitter, but you can also try to find a way for having uh, Alexa. And well, you see you have, uh, well, um, Angular, React, View, and you can see how each other solves the problem that you already have. And the video, just, yep, do. How do you play the video? So here you can see that it was, uh, is, it, is it working? <laughs> now, uh, I was, I was saying they started working before the designs of the out of the box was cre were created. So it's mainly based with um, material design. So you can see that it's, it's nice. You can see recipes here. You can see the, the recipe itself with the preparation time, for example. So they figure out and they help together one to another. And it's actually working and you can try it now on several consumers. Take your computer. Okay. And finally, the last target was uh, the Drupal developer, Nina, uh, that uh, is the Typical person that how, how knows how to build a Drupal site, knows how everything with modules work and so on. And uh, they uh, come out with these steps where uh, you install content that you don't have to see uh, the composer. It's not just the composer, you copy the composer and you have it. They came with these smart configurations that 
they know how to how to work with it and they came up with all together and then you just install Contenta and you actually have the API ready for try it and play a little bit with it. Then uh, you actually have a bunch of um, um, consumers to try them. If you are going to work with React, for example, you can try it out or you are a React developer and you just want to try it, hope you solve all the things you have it just right there to try it. And of course there are a lot of, there's a lot of documentation there. So you can even know m much more information about that. You can also help uh, adding some more documentation. And there's this really useful thing where you try this um, demo with the recipe and you probably are not going to build a recipe magazine for your customer. So you just have to click and remove everything. And you actually have a Drupal uh, ready decoupled environment. And you just have to create your content types and as you will do with any other CMS. And it's ready and configured to, to try it. So, next steps, uh, there's a mailing list that Mateo uh, created some days ago for the couple, the couple Drupal jobs. Here you have the, the link uh, to, to join it. Uh, the plan is adding uh, Graffle uh, support, and let's talk about this during the DrupalCon. Uh, you, there's the Slack channel where you can join and chat with almost, I think, 199 people. One more, 200, yeah. <laughs> and um, of course, you can come up and say your pain points, what you find out where, while you were building, and whatever you think you need. And. What I was saying, just join Contenta, the Contenta Slack channel. You can follow Contenta on Twitter. Um, come and talk with these smart people. And you want to say so? Okay. And to get involved, uh, just join the conversation. There's a bunch of people just talking and answering things uh, on the Slack channel. There's move on almost every day there. And you can decide where to contribute. There's a lot of documentation. You can ask for people where to start and they will point you where you can start. You can ask for help if you, if you are just getting stuck somewhere. And for me, the most important part, uh, it's just do it healthy. If you just uh, have to do another stuff for a while, just came, up, came later and continue helping, but just don't burn doing it. And that's all. Thank you. Um, we'll take questions just after Christina tells us about the logo, because I really love the logo she designed for us. Hello. Uh, so this looks very impressive, but um, it seems it is using a lot of bleeding edge code, and I'm wondering about uh, how will this get industrialized in terms of uh, updating. This is always a problem with uh, distributions. How did you see uh, you yourself and handling this? Um, I think we have less of a problem for that because we don't have really a content model. I mean, you wouldn't like use the recipe website, so you wouldn't like use that along, the, the, along, right? So like, we don't have a cotton model, so we don't have to maintain it. So at least our idea is like, it's a starting kit. It's not something you, like, you update. It's just a starting kit, which like, solves like, so many hard problems. Um, I know there are other people which try to solve that problem. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Hi. Um, so I haven't played with Contenta yet. I have played with Reservoir, um, and it was very pretty, but I ran into one issue straight away, which I don't know if it's a JSON API issue or not. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts, which was views integration. 
straight out of the box, I had to just turn on REST API and circumvent all the JSON API stuff just to get the data I wanted, so I'm curious about that. And also, you mentioned sprints, so I'm just curious on what the plan is and what you're planning on working on. So when you said views integration, did you mean for getting data into your API or to list your content on the back end? To take your content from the back end and expose it to the front end consumer. Okay, yeah, so, so one of the ideas with JSON API and uh, Contenta is that you won't be using views to expose that stuff anymore. Uh, one of the most powerful things, <laughs> someone applaud, yes. Uh, one of the most powerful things about JSON API is you can compose lots of queries together. Uh, so it's not like REST where you have to go fetch one endpoint, wait for it to come back, and then get more data that way. Uh, you can get all kinds of complex relationships and get all of that data out yourself through the query. There's also another module, I'm not sure if we've included it yet, called sub-requests. So you can actually make separate requests separately, but you can get it back in one call from Drupal itself. So the idea is you would never need to use views for any kind of output onto your back end. You would only be using it to build like, content listings and whatnot in your admin interface. Sure. Um, so just <laughs> on that, um, and it's, it's clearly just a learning thing, I think, from my point of view, because I did discover some of the additional query stuff I could do, because out of the box, I found that you know, I want a list of entities. I can get that with the JSON API, but that's of one particular bundle. If I want multiple di different bundles all mixed together with all the relationships, I found the experience to be quite difficult. And I did find some snippets of information in JSON API documentation on how to get like relationship to a file entity so I can actually get the URI at the same time as the query. And, and I guess my thoughts on that, like views, I can just say, hey, I want to get all the entities of this type, and I just want to get the file URI, that's it, and just give me the data I want, which is really good. But what you're saying then is um, maybe it pinpoints that there needs to be sort of like a query builder built in, some way of actually building up these complex views of different types of data and give you the endpoints so that you don't have to you know, struggle around with things that we have come so acclimatized to with things like use to get that same data. Yeah, a query build is a nice idea that would just like spit out a URL or like a, a bit of JSON that you could send at the end. And the, the thing with views is we, when you stop, sorry. <laughs> um, when you're building these views, you're essentially creating all these custom endpoints. And so at that point, you've like lost standardization. Um, if you're building with JavaScript frameworks, I c there's a couple of NPM packages. There's one called JSON API Normalizer that I would highly recommend, and it kind of like makes it a bit more easy to read as well. Uh, on the JSON API module page, there's a link to some good documentation. It can be confusing. I've definitely run in it, into it myself as well. Um, in that case, I would recommend joining the Contenta Slack channel, and we'll help you where we can and hopefully update the documentation to make it easier too. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, maybe GraphQL solves some of your problems, especially because GraphQL like integrates not just with like entity query, which is what uh, tracing API is doing, but it's also like integrating with views and all kind of things. Um, but it's, as as Sally said, like it's easy to like fall into the trap of like just doing a custom endpoint, and then you realize that your your other consumers can't really use that. Um, and, and the reason we didn't put GraphQL in to start with is because back when we started this, um, you weren't able to just plug the GraphQL module in and have data come out. You had to configure it uh, for your content type. So it wasn't really practical. Uh, but that's changed now. So um, that's what we're going to be working on, uh, hopefully over DrupalCon as well. And to answer your other question about what to do during the sprints, I think we have a big list. Um, so we'll be on a table at the sprints, uh, come and find us, or I think we'll tweet out stuff we want to work on as well. Anyway, so Dick, he's been very patient. <laughs> First of all, awesome stuff. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, do you tend to host, deploy, and maintain the back end and the front end on the same virtual host, or do you tend to break them apart? Like, what, what's your ten ten tendency there? 
Um, we've actually left that up to the consumer um, authors themselves. So I use Heroku for the React one. I think if you're using Firebase for your Elm ones. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's whatever is easiest for the person who's maintaining that particular consumer to do. So whatever you like, uh, which is kind of nice as well because then uh, we're not, hopefully not gonna run into some problem of like, oh no, we didn't realize this would only work when everyone is hosted in the same place. Yeah, so I guess my, thank you for your amazing work on the Contenta. I actually installed the uh, installation profile first time this month and it looks really amazing. I was very impressed. Um, so uh, my question, I guess, is related to his question, is uh, related to the fact that sometimes maybe your API is not equal with your data model. You might want to store things that you don't provide in your API, or you might have some uh, permissions, like field level permissions, so you need a more complicated API builder uh, for, for creating the API. Is there any, any work on that, or is there any existing frameworks around that? Um. There's something Matteo built recently, which is the consumer module. Uh, the consumer module is a way to say, okay, these are the actual consumers I have, similar to like, like if you develop an app on Facebook where you also register apps, and uh, this allows theoretically to customize anything. Um, it, it's just a data storage for something per consumer, and it theoretically allows you to customize things per consumer. Um, the consumer image styles module is the thing which provides you the image styles and that allows you already customization per consumer and um, I could imagine that it will be expanded to um, like JSON API extras could do the same right you could like customize the output per consumer and this kind of stuff but it doesn't solve your immediate problem of course um, I guess GraphQL has a good solution for that I don't know it doesn't really we just turn off everything that is okay. related to the Drupal integration and do everything customized. Uh, and that's one of the big hurdles, at least for us, because of like, if you really have to build a complex API, like with field level permissions and things like that, it's uh, there's no framework for that. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your, for your answer. I think one thing we can all sum up, decoupled is not a magic bullet, um, it's hard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it sounds like a lot of people are having issues with figuring out how to get data out of JSON API. Um, and I have also been in that boat. I particularly found it hard uh, trying to figure out media because um, they're separate entities in Drupal, and so when they come out of JSON API, they're not actually connected to the content you wanted, so you have to start like looking down the tree to try and figure out like what media matches up um, which is difficult if you're writing a consumer, and it's even more difficult if you're not aware of Drupalisms. So yeah, I would again recommend JSON API Normalizer. I would also recommend looking through the consumers. Um, if you go on our GitHub, it's github.com slash contenta.cms. See how other people have got around this problem. Um, I think for the React one, if I can show you. Sorry, hang on. This keyboard is German, all right, I'm confused. <laughs> uh, how do I make this go away? Okay. Ta-da. Uh, so for the React one, um, use JSON API normalizer, and I have this like transforms folder. So every time recipes come in, um, I'm actually just like trying to make it a bit less droopily as it comes out. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, like we do have JSON API extras to make it even less droopily, but um, sometimes you'll still need to do stuff on the consumers. I would really love it if we didn't have to do stuff like this. Uh, but you know, it, JSON API is a standard. It's not a Drupal thing. Uh, let's see, an example. Do, 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 do. Yeah, here. Nice. Oh yeah. How do I do that? Cool. It's all German. I don't. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. A little less. 
Yeah. Um, I think it's like, yeah, okay. So here, I'm just trying to like normalize every way I store my data so that when you actually um, load the consumer up, uh, you'll have it kind of sane. Uh, is there a link to this? Do you have Redux DevTools? Uh, yeah. Come on. Nine. Do you have a production build now? <laughs> Do I have a what? Do you have a production build? A production build. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, well, uh, if you download Contento React and open Redux DevTools, you'll see how I've normalized the data into a store so it's actually usable um, as a consumer. So I would go and try that one out, um, see if that makes life a little bit easier. Anyway, unless we have more, yeah. Yes. Uh, you're competing on a very competitive segment, so thumbs up. Uh, and I'd like to ask you, uh, what do you think that's the main purpose and advantage over Prisming, Contentful, and direct directors, and Copilot, and uh, usually like CMS as services? It, what's the purpose of them? Uh, no, no, what's the what's purpose of, of Contenta? Oh, actually, and what, versus yeah, what's the hosted biggest solutions. advantage? Yeah, um, well, so with hosted solutions, there's obviously going to be limitations on what you can do. So you can't just go in and add custom code to do some kind of crazy back-end service. Uh, so you can't do that. Um, sometimes that's not a bad thing. Uh, also, often people just want to own their data. They don't really want to rely on, on a cloud infrastructure for that kind of thing, um, especially if you work in uh, certain fields like insurance. Um, they won't be able to store their data with services like that often because they always have to have it in-house because of like, all kinds of maddening security. Well, not maddening, it's good. <laughs> um, lots of security stuff around it. So there's always going to be room for self-hosted um, API solutions. Any other question? Okay, cool. Uh, we'll call that a talk then. Ta-da! <laughs>